Hi. Hey, Russ here. Welcome back to my shop. I want to talk about my legacy again. Um, after yesterday, when people saw it, I got as many questions about the Xylus Vice as I did about showing you how to zero out your axis. And so today I'm going to show you my flat milling table and all the things I do with it and why I have it set up the way I do. When you're doing flat milling as opposed to center turning, um, a good work surface, and I've gone, I've, I've gone through several different ones, and this is my, my latest one. I've been using it for probably close to a year now. And I actually haven't done, I like it the way it is. I don't think there's much else I really want to do to it. But how it works is, it's first off, how it's made. This is three pieces of plywood, two MDF pieces and one regular cabinet grade uh, three-quarter inch plywood. Sandwiched together, the two, uh, two lower pieces are the width between the table rails and this upper piece is wide enough to fit between here. And so it sets on top of the table. And that's how it's held in place. It's by gravity and a couple of quick knot turn knobs. So in order to put it in, I put a dowel here and here on opposite corners. And 3 8 dowel, same as my track dimension. And so when I drop it in on them, that gives me pretty much perfect alignment every time, instantly. So I know I'm square. So I drop it in on the other two corners. I just take it and push it up to one rail or the other to make sure that I'm up against there, and that means I'm parallel. And then I just snug this down. Move this over just a hair, right there. And then I just snug it down. Doesn't take a whole lot. And now, this is held in place. On this end of the vise, I put a, a regular Moxon style vise on here. And all it is is a couple of F clamps that I put, that I mounted in here. This piece of plywood is mounted 90 degrees to my top surface, and I have sandpaper on that. And that helps it to grip when I put my piece in here. Sandpaper, just like in my video, holding power and more holding power. If you haven't seen that, you need to go back and look at that. You'll understand why I did this. So, and then the face of the vise, this has the slots in it to fit over the arms of my clamps and it drops in and I turn the knobs to hold it in place and it just slides back and forth in there. So if I want to take a piece of wood and clamp it in here, I can put it in here, bring this up, push my clamps up and then just like a moxin vise I snug them down equally until I feel like I can, you know, get somewhat snug with the fingers. It doesn't take a whole lot. And this thing is now not going to move. And I can put finger joints, a tenon, or a mortise on this pretty easily. All I got to do is get my router over here, zero out all three axes, and I'm ready to start milling this. So the end vise here is actually very handy. I also use it as a uh, bench stop. A uh, bench hook. I'm not sure what you call it, but basically, turn it this way. A piece of wood, and I put it in there this way, and now it's a stop. So now I can take my piece of wood and put it in here, and it stops up against it. So I can take my wonder pup and drop it in. Here, adjust them to hold it, and then snug this down. And this piece is ready. That piece is now ready to start being milled. Just that quick and easy. So I can mill smaller pieces up to here without any problem. So if I put this all the way out to here to hold this, now I can put a piece this long in here. Um, I also have a little brother of this tabletop, and all it is is just a slab with six holes in it that match these holes. These holes are all proportionally in alignment with each other so that it, it, it makes it square however I put anything in here. 
So if I put two bench dogs in it this way, that's going to square me this way to my table, perpendicular to my rails. If I put them in this way, it's going to then hold me parallel this way. So the, just like on an MTF, MFT table, um, this will help to keep you square using these dog holes. So I set it up with three rows of dog holes and I spaced them apart this way based on the width in here and then I made them like three inches apart going up this way. Uh, right here I got it notched out and that is for my xylus vise uh, which we'll talk about next. So when not in use I just kind of finger tied it in place so it's out of the way, slugged down and now we move on and look at how I use this vise. Um, so you take this vise, this is a xylus, if you haven't seen one of these, it's Z-Y-L-I-S-S. -S. Look it up on YouTube, do a search on that name, and you'll see all sorts of demos of how this thing works. Uh, there's a lot of attachments for this. I used one over on my regular bench, and this one I use here. So I actually have two of these, but I have only one full set, and it works on either vise if I need to do any of the accessories on it. So, but I just mount it right in here, is what it's designed to do. <coughs> and then I just snug it down. And I put my end vise movable block out at the end, beyond my two hole downs. And then I can take, and I can put... Um, for example, I can put my T-Track in here. And now, I can put my piece of wood, let's say I want to tighten up this one. Just I can put this one in here. And now, this one is tightened in place held down with my T-Track as a stop. And I can move this depending on the length of the board. So I can put any length board in here I want. And again, with this little brother setting out here, I can clamp it down and actually put this out here so I can do longer boards too. That one I can move and keep independent of my regular table. So I can do up to a six foot long board using this method between the two tables. So that's how you hold it down. But sometimes that isn't enough to hold it, depending on what you're doing. So I also can put a T-track in on the side. And then I put a couple of spacers in here. I'll hold that up against there. And I put a couple of bench dogs here. And I find the right spaced board. Let's move these down. And now I can take my two wedges. I have two different size wedges, match set. And I put them in here. And now this is wedging this up against this track. And this, when I tighten it down. It's now holding this piece permanently between this and make sure everything is nice and flat on the table before I start. <coughs> and I'm now ready to mill this piece without worrying about it falling, coming out of there. Between being wedged this way and this way, this piece will stay pretty stable in there. As far as my xylus, this handle, if I pull the handle this way, it tightens it because of this configuration. And I usually put it down there, and what I do is I put it. It's hanging down. I take a, a small bungee cord with a couple of hooks, and I hook it over the knob, over the knob of my xylus. And that's holding it toward the tightening it. 
So the bungee cord holds it so that it doesn't undo itself in the vibration from the machine, which it could possibly do. So that assures me that that xylus isn't going to come loose while I'm milling something down. And that really helps, makes it a lot more secure. Now again, of course, it's not sticking up when I do it. I have it doing it down below. But this is, I did it this way so you can see how I did it. So that's how you hold piece in place here. You have a lot of options for hold downs. Um, if you want, you can use these bench dogs. You've seen these, right? A couple of days ago, I did a video on this. It's a bench dog anchor. <laughs> and now, I have the bench dog holes, but I also have uh, quarter inch T-nuts holes drilled at certain locations so that I can put this in that T-track in there. Excuse me, that hold down. And now this hold down is ready to be used as a hold down. Uh, working off of these. But sometimes this is not a good location to hold down. I want to move it over a half inch or something. Well, that's where these come in handy. The bench the bench anchors. I can put that in from the bottom. Now I can put my piece in here instead and hold my piece down. And now I can hold it down using the bench dog hole location for my hold down. So the bench dog, bench dog anchors, regular bench dogs, the Xylus vise, a couple of T-tracks with bench dogs on them, it makes up most of my holding uh, strategy. I keep a bunch of different size pieces of wood over here and that just kind of varies but mostly that's to help me get the spacing that I'm looking for when I'm ready to hold something down but I don't know how I'm going to hold it down until I start putting different pieces in different places. Now if you want this Xylus vise will also hold the piece directly vertical similar to what the end vise does and if I take this off and move my clamp to the end it. Now this is in between my two clamps and put this back on. Like so. Now I can go in between here with a piece of wood. And so now my piece of wood can go in here and the clamp the board is held by the clamp on both the bottom end and the top end. So what that means is that when I put my piece of wood in here and I clamp it down, this is held in there very good because it's held at four points. And so that's what makes a xylus vise pretty strong for holding this. If I have a problem with the length of it, like right now, that board is too long. It's going to hit the carriage because it's sticking up too high. So if I bring this over so it's over my waste bin area, dust collection waste bin, you've seen that, right? I can take it out and then I have access all the way to the floor so I can then drop this down and put a board in here that's up to 42 or 43 inches long to do milling on the end of the board. So I can take long boards, a lot of them different long boards, and put them in here and mill them also using this vise. Um, there's lots of other things I kind of do with this. That gives you a quick example. There's one more thing that you can do with this table. And I said whatever configuration you use, as you can see, I can set it up pretty quick by using these methods. And I keep certain things around. I keep a couple of T-tracks, some bench dogs, some bench anchors, my xylus, and then I have the end vise. And then I just put this anywhere along there I need to do the work I need to do. Um, the last thing I'm going to show you is 
it's also can be used as a circle jig real easily. I can take my bench dog here, my bench anchor, and this one in particular, I put a 5 16 doll in here because that hole was already existing. But you can make one up with any size doll if you want, or just a pin even. And you put that up in your hole. Now you can take the piece of wood that you want to mill into a circle. And I drill a hole in it. And I can take that now and pop that in there. And now I can cut this out into a circle using my milling machine. I can take and cut this piece in particular, or I can take a different piece and mount it to this with double sided tape, screws from underneath, whatever I'm doing, it, and then mill this piece instead. So, this is my circle jig also. <coughs> Most of my circle jigs, this is how I do it. Anyway, this is my sliding uh, milling table. It's what I use on my Legacy to do most flat milling and that sort of thing. Um, it works real well. It doesn't take long to set it up. And I can do just about anything on here flat milling wise that I can do on any other machine I got. And then some. So, I like it. It works fast. works easy. And it's always available. Listen, I want to thank you for stopping by. Oh, one more thing before you go. I also have this table that I made, <coughs> and I have two dolls here, three eighths dolls, and there are times when I can take, the dolls are now hitting there, lift it up, drop it in, and now it's setting in on, uh, it's setting in here, so I take my two stops. Put one on that corner, <coughs> put one on this corner, and now I have a quick work table that I can use. So I use this as a work table sometimes too. So that's my leg and machine and my, my uh, milling work. Thanks for stopping by. I really appreciate it. Please leave comments and don't forget to like this video. Um, and most importantly, please come back again because there's more to come. Thanks.